Hello people, I'm here again and now I'm going to be telling you about apparent magnitude and brightness. Um, so this is uh, the first way that stars were classified in a way. Um, now, I have to tell you that apparent magnitude is kind of related with the brightness of the stars, I told you, and then absolute magnitude is going to be related to the lumin... When I say related, it's not the best word, but it's more to do with the luminosity of the stars. I will give you more details, but um, let me just tell you that the apparent magnitude in, is known as... A, so the symbol is a tiny m, okay? A lowercase m. And it is, by definition, how bright a star or an object appears in the uh, sky from Earth, so it's viewed from Earth, okay? This uh, became, um, or started, back in 150 before Christ, <coughs> sorry, uh, when this guy called Hipparchus, he was uh, looking at the sky and he invented this scale to kind of make the stars into different groups, so to make a categories of different stars to the brightest, to the dimmest, okay? So he assigned an apparent magnitude of one to the very bright stars in the sky, okay? So the ones that were the brightest ones. And then he was doing it is, uh, oh, this one is not as bright, so it's going to be two. This one not as bright as the, set, uh, the other one, so it's a three. And then the very dimmest stars, the, the one that he could not, it was right the threshold uh, for him to be able to see the lights uh, of the stars in um, naked eye, he gave a ma apparent magnitude of six, okay? So those were the dimmest stars. So when we talk about magnitudes, the smaller the number, the brighter the star, okay? Because I am telling you about apparent magnitudes, I'm telling you about how they appear to be as viewed from Earth. Now, sometimes a dim star may appear brighter than a very bright star that is very far away. So there is another scale, but it's called the absolute magnitude, which then tells you what is the actual magnitude of the star if it, they would all be at the same distance, which will be 10 parsec. I will go and I'll make a video about it, okay? So apparent magnitude is how they appear to be. Absolute magnitude is what they actually are, okay? So the magnitude scale that we use at the moment uh, is still based on the Parker system, okay? So it's still based on brightest to dimmest, one to the brightest one, and six to the dimmest one. Now what happened was we were looking at uh, the scale that he'd made, but we, in the meantime, we found other objects, okay? So this is an example of the apparent magnitude of several objects. So look at the sun. The sun has an apparent magnitude of minus 26.7, okay? So this is the brightest thing that we see, okay? So this is the upper limit. So that's the apparent magnitude of the sun. When you will learn about the absolute magnitude of the sun, you're going to be like, oh, because it's actually quite I, wa I was going to say low, but actually is a bigger number, right? Because remember, the brighter the object, the lower the magnitude. So the sun is actually not bright at all. It just happens that it's close, so it appears brighter. So minus 26.7 for the sun. Full moon, for example, is minus 12.6. Venus, minus 4.4. Mars, minus 3. Sirius, which is, uh, they say they are the brightest star, that's um, the, the brightest star that we know at the moment, okay, is minus 1.6 at the distance that we see it now, okay, so it's the brightest star in our night sky, so the absolute magnitude is actually a very small number, so a very negative number, but um, uh, at the apparent magnitude is minus 1.6. Um, naked eye limit in an urban neighborhood is plus 3, Uranus at the brightest is plus 5.5, naked eye limit, the actual limit is plus 6, the last one in a Parker scale, and then we have other stuff, so Pluto for example uh, at the brightest is plus 13.7, and the faintest object observed by the Hubble Space Telescope is, has an apparent magnitude of 30, okay? 
I wouldn't say that you have to know these numbers by heart, but you kind of have to have an idea of the ranges we have. I would maybe remember the one for the sun, okay, and the naked eye limit, of course. Now, there is this thing called the brightness. Now, the brightness is how much energy is coming from the star per square meter per second as measured on Earth. So, as measured in our soil, okay? And, of course, this is subjective to scale of measurement, okay? So, the brightness, apparent brightness, small b, is equal to L, big L, the luminosity, divided by 4 pi d squared, where d is the distance that the object or the star is at meters. L, big L, is to do with the big M of the absolute magnitude comes in, uh, is the luminosity in watts, so energy per second, joules per second. B, small b, so remember has to do with the apparent magnitude. Small b is the apparent brightness and is going to be the energy that reaches um, or the energy that is in an, each square meter, right? So is watts per square meter or if you want is joules per second meter minus two, okay? So that's the brightness. So as I told you, it's, it's um, the further away the star is, the less bright it seems to be, but the actually luminosity is how much energy the star radiates. So this one does not depend on distance, but the brightness decreases with the distance squared, okay? And now, I actually forgot to mention this, but there is a relationship between brightness and apparent magnitude, okay? Now, the demonstration for this is quite big. It would be a, a different lesson, slides, uh, video. So, at the moment, just trust me on this, that this is what actually happens. So, imagine that you have two stars, and they have a difference of a magnitude, of apparent magnitudes of one. So, for example, my first star is, has an apparent magnitude of 1.2, my second of 2.2, then the difference in, in their magnitudes is of 1, okay? So, the ratio of the apparent brightness of the two stars is going to be the brightness of the first star divided by the brightness of the second star, which is equal to 2.512, okay? As I told you, there is a way to demonstrate this. I'm not going to do it on this video, but I will in future, okay? But you just need to trust me on that. And in case you are doing an exam on astrophysics, uh, this is something that you need to know, okay? So the ratio of the apparent brightness of two stars with the difference of magnitude of one is going to be 2.5. I think 2.5 would be okay, but it's 2.512, okay? All right, so that's all for today. It is really just telling you about apparent brightness, sorry, apparent magnitude and brightness. And next, I'm actually going to talk about distances, okay? So, and then the other brightnesses will come later. You will see why it has this order. It all has a secret and is all very smart, but you will understand after, okay? So, see you in the next video and take care. Bye.